Welcome to another episode of the Captain's Chair. Uh, it's been a while since we did the Star Trek episode. Uh, we realized we made a certain promise with uh, Star Trek Discovery and we didn't kind of live up to it. I just nodded my head. I didn't say anything. I know, man. I no know. promise. Well, maybe. I, you might have agreed, you might have not. I would have to go back and check, but nobody has time for that. So This poster is good. And now you realize. Mm -hmm. Well, anyways... Um, we, we've seen season 2 of Star Trek Discovery and I, I did enjoy it. I was kind of surprised at certain things uh, with, uh, you know, bringing in Enterprise and uh, bringing in Spock and uh, certain time travel things. But overall I enjoyed the second season of Discovery. I have having... one gripe with the second season. Okay, shoot. Yeah, go for it. Jason Isaacs or lag thereof. Okay, yeah. I, I agree. If yep. you watch season one, you know exactly what transpired. You know how he got to where he was. Yep. You know where he got there from. And you know why they killed him off. And the fact that, you know, he's dead. But when they were announcing Discovery's yep. first season, yep. one of the big selling points... Was, was Jason, Jason Isaacs. Isaacs. Agreed, 100%. Now, whoever watched Jason Isaacs, he's a versatile actor. He did many movies, many TV shows, and he was a big... I mean, we were going to watch Discovery either way. Of course. I mean, I, there you was mean, no... I, you two being... Uh, you having met him doesn't oh, yeah, have any... I met, yeah. I met the guy. Guy's great, he's friendly, he's nice. I enjoyed meeting him, it was fun. So it was a big draw of course. to discover of the course. past that Jason Isaacs not only was in it, but he was playing the captain. But if, you, there's yeah, if you're watching this and you watch this, uh, we mentioned many times we grew up on Star Trek Voyager, we love Star Trek, we watched them pretty much all of them. Multiple times. Multiple times, some more than others, but it's like when it comes to Star Trek, there's a new series, of course we're gonna watch oh, yeah, it, so we're, we're hyped for season two, of course, a little bit. Yeah, but you know. No, Jason Isaacs in it. Still a fun story, still a great story. Yeah, and still... what they did with Captain Pike also, I mean, I gotta give him props, man. Uh, I did not the expect The storytelling in this one. Off the charts. Off the charts. And it's the fact that they have, they have the highest budget for any Star Trek. Yeah. Really helps because and I think they're at a point where if you can imagine it, we can make, make it, it happen. Yeah, exactly. Because we have the funds to make it happen. And now and like the red, the whole retcon thing with the Star Trek, uh, with the USS Enterprise, right? With the whole ship. It's like back in the 60s. I mean, I'm, I'm watching the original series yeah. with the uh, high school buddy of mine right now. And, and I'm watching you see, the original, uh, the yeah. first Enterprise, yeah. the X-01. So yeah, yeah, yeah. But basically when, you, when you're watching the 60s, uh, you, they have all these lights on the screen and this... I mean... You have to read data from all those lights. You can't really. So I like the fact that they took Enterprise and they put com actual computers in it, which makes sense. Technology yeah, wise. Technology and, wise. And I like certain things that they retconned. We came along with Yeah, and Captain assistance. Pike, you know, he appeared in uh, two episodes of the original series in the first one. Then they kind of get got rid of the original cast for the second episode. And they decided, oh, we're going to tell the story like 10 years later. And then they bring him back, back later in the fifth or sixth episode of the original series. And they do something with him that's, that they actually touch on in the second season with Talos 4. Um, and of course, you also get to see Captain Pike. In the uh, first movies of the J.J. Abrams era. Yeah. Yeah. So... So he is no stranger. He is the captain of the Enterprise before Kirk yep. takes over. So seeing him in the role of a captain of Discovery... Well, he comes over from Enterprise and yeah. stuff. But uh, yeah, definitely. I liked it. And I, I mean, to me, this was Star Trek. I mean, they had the way teams... They went. They went in search of you know. They were, they were chasing all those mysterious lights that appeared in various different universes. And the way they tied them back to the. I mean, they they brought in something new at the uh, before the second season started and before now that it ended also with the short tracks, and the way they tell these little stories in like five to eight minute segments, pretty much is uh, they're beautiful stories told really well and the and way they 
they usually touch have a tie-in in to series. what's happening. Yeah. So if you watch the latest bunch of uh, short tricks that came out, uh, you see a nice little tie-in with what happened with uh, Picard. Yeah. Definitely. The car came out. And I'm still wondering. So yeah, and I'm still wondering whether we're continuing the original series or if this is a separate universe because well, they don't the really thing. give they don't really give you any hints. The With short the tracks, they're tied into Discovery. Yes. The way they tied in Picard with the short tracks makes me believe that Picard and Discovery are set in the same universe. Definitely. But whether we're seeing the uh, original Prime Universe or maybe some, not necessarily Kelvin, Kelvin timeline, which is the J.J. Abrams yeah. movie series. I'm not sure it's in the Kelvin. I'm timeline. sure it's this probably is probably like something else. else. I'm because when you pick a different timeline, it actually sort of gives you a clean slate, as in events might have happened in the Prime Universe, in the Kelvin Universe, but necessarily in this universe they didn't exactly like the destruction of uh, Romulus in uh, Supernova that doesn't actually happen in the Prime Universe but does happen in the Kelvin Universe yeah and because it also happens in the Star Trek Picard the new series that just started that I've, we've talked about it before in one of the episodes and we were really, really looking forward to this and I'm I do, I'm still waiting for this turn. Maybe it is tied to the original universe, but well, see, because of who is Maybe it's tied into Kelvin. Maybe, maybe. Because, like you said, Picard does deal with the destructions of... Romulus, yeah. And mm. I actually like the fact that they're, that we're touching with the... Uh, we, we're bringing Romulans back in again, in a way. Because even though they're a big part of Star Trek in general, we don't get to see them often. Most of what we've seen of uh, Romulans happened in Deep Space Nine when the Dominion attacked Alpha Quadrant and they decided to join in the fight. What was basically a plot, it was a plot done by uh, Federation. They wanted to bring them in but uh, Garrick kind of made sure that that actually happened because Federation isn't willing to do certain things. But that's neither here nor there. We can touch about morality. Speaking of, of Deep Space Nine. Speaking of Deep Space Nine, one of the first thing that things that happened this year was this year, right? Or not sure. Maybe or, probably last year. Or Maybe, end of yeah. last year, we've lost uh, Rene Abujoinis. I guess I'm not sure how to pronounce his name, but he played one of the most popular characters on Star Trek ever uh, in the Changeling of Odo on this. Deep Space Nine, and I've actually just rewatched Deep Space Nine while I was watching uh, the, while I'm watching the original series and uh, the Next Generation all simultaneously, which I've never done before, and it can be confusing for anybody new who's doing it. But you know, for us who watch them multiple times, it's not that uh, it's not that. Uh, oh, confusing. to have your free time at my <laughs> disposal. Mm. Yes, um, but anyways. The things that they do with his character, they pretty much tie his story story off. Uh, they end his basically the way they end his character's story arc in the Deep Space Nine series truly beautiful and fitting for that character. And now that the actor is no longer there, I'm kind of sad. I am sad. I was sad. Uh, I thought maybe they could bring his character back eventually, but obviously that's not gonna happen. So. Rene did a great job with Odo and Deep Space Nine is, has lots of great moments. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's in regards to that. I hope maybe eventually we get a Changeling series or one of the Changeling characters. In I'd the, like to see a character. In the, character. in the last season of Deep Space Nine, uh, this character Loss shows up and basically what happened was the original, they're called Founders, the original Changelings in Gamma Quadrant. They, I mean, anybody who watched Star Trek knows this. They sent out a hundred uh, offspring, so to speak, all across the galaxy. And this is this guy is one of the hundred. And he has a short, short uh, visit with Dodo, lasting few days because he's very conservative. He doesn't trust solids and he goes on his way. And maybe later on, I don't know, maybe we could see like a short mini-series based on his 
because he wanted to go off because yeah, Dominion the was still in the war with Federation in the Alpha Quadrant and the Klingons and Romulans. And he asked Odo to maybe go off on their own and start their own great link. Uh, so maybe I would love to see maybe some of his travels, maybe influence. Well, here's the thing, now the CBS is going all in basically on Star Trek, you know, starting with Discovery, now we got Picard. Uh, they're gonna do another movie. Uh, also, yeah, in uh, the Kelvin universe, not yeah. tying into and plus the uh, Quantum Tarantino. That movie. is Tarantino's movie, I think. They're only doing Tarantino's movie because uh, I think they're doing Chris it. Tucker. Chris Tucker. But I would love to see Chris Tucker in Star Trek, man. But uh, Chris uh, Chris Hemsworth and uh, Chris Pine. Uh, didn't get to negotiate a good deal for themselves, so their yeah, movie is off. Think, yeah, uh, they, or their movie may become Quentin Tarantino's movie. Whatever I'm it is, he sure, wrote. But there were whatever some, it is, he wrote. They're definitely doing it right now. There so. were some speculations that we might get Chris's back to do another. Couple. It would be great, man. I'd so I think it. that's still gonna happen. Plus, we're gonna get Tarantino movie. Plus, with what they're doing with Discovery, we're gonna get a third season soon. Despite what everybody. I mean, there's a lot of trekkers out there who don't like Discovery. There's comments floating around, this isn't Star Trek, this isn't my Star Trek. But I would have to disagree because I think Star Trek Discovery is doing something different. And uh, also, I mean, I like the way that they're doing certain things. And mm -hmm. I would like to maybe... I get what white people think. It's not really Star Trek. Maybe they could put a pedal on certain things. But I think it's great. I mean, I'm enjoying it. For uh, sure. The only issue I may have is with the uh, trouble with Edward, the uh, short track, where we actually discovered that basically Federation was guilty for the whole treble epidemic uh, that later caught up with Captain Kirk. So maybe, and maybe even maybe it's their fault that they, the troubles invaded the uh, Klingon Empire on a certain planet, and the Klingon warriors said to go up and uh, basically wipe out troubles away from the map, so to speak. Uh, in Deep Space Nine, I think it was Quark or somebody is messing with Worf, and when he's talking about troubles, like as pests and whatever. And somebody asked him, I was like, uh, did you write, a, is there a Klingon opera, you know, <laughs> basically, uh, not even, you know, worshipping uh, the brave Klingon warriors who destroyed all the troubles. So there's, uh, I like, I like that it's all connected. I like the way it is connected, that they're connecting it. So there's, uh, it's a great time to be a Star Trek fan. Definitely. And I was talking to somebody also, it was like, uh, I was talking about somebody I met recently and it's like, I was like, oh, I'm watching this Star Trek and stuff. It's like, oh, I've never watched Star Trek. It's like, it's never too late to start. It's like, but I don't know anything about it. The great thing I said about Star Trek is that you don't have to know anything about it. No, just and pick up, start watching and I, learn along the and way. And I would, I mean, start with the next generation. If you're watching this for the first time, you're wondering about Star Trek and we spoil some stuff for you maybe. But uh, if you're wondering where to start, I'd say the next generation is the best place to start. Because the original series, even though it, it is a great place to start, it got old. Uh, some of it didn't age up very well, some of it still good. I'm not saying it's all bad, it's not bad at all, but... And rewatching it again, I'm thinking it's a great show, but I think you can only appreciate it if you're familiar with Star Trek. I don't think you will... Or science fiction in general, but... I Otherwise it might put you off. Definitely. I think it might put people off. So start with the next generation and go with deep, you know, the movies, Deep Space Nine, Voyager, Enterprise, and then move to the original series and its the six movies. I actually enjoy all those six movies, man. And then pick up with the new stuff that came out. Pick yeah. up with Discovery, Picard, and whatever else is in store for the Star Trek universe. If you got time, you know, uh, you got Netflix, and you gotta have Amazon Prime for uh, Picard, but you know, you can cross that bridge when you get to it. I don't think you have to start because if you start with Star Trek Picard, a lot of things won't make 
sense to yeah definitely newcomers. get uh, I th it's introduced to the lore first yeah some of it at least because otherwise something is just I mean we just watched first episode so I, I don't want to say a lot of things won't make sense but a lot of things won't make sense yeah. so yeah um, especially so yeah so you know a lot of good things in store for the trekkies and uh, we for one can wait to see what comes next yeah, and hopefully, and I saw there's a video floating around with the the cast of Star Trek Picard talking about which characters they'd like to see on the series. And I know we didn't record this, but before the show was released, I said if there is no Q in this series, that that that's just not right. And apparently, uh, I was gonna say Jean Luc Picard, but. Yeah, Jean-Luc Picard, Patrick Stewart said he wants to see John Delancey, a.k.a. Q, in the series, in second season. So, obviously, he's not there in the first season, which I think is just, is just not right. It's not right, and that needs to be rectified. So... Well, probably will. Maybe they couldn't get time. Although, he said, he, also, right. he, said so. he also wants to see Guinan. Which uh, Whoopi Goldberg, which well, would Whoopi also Goldberg be really cool. is gonna. He did. Uh, he appeared on the View, where uh, Whoopi is one of the hostesses for, and he did extend the formal invitation to join the cast for season two. She accepted, so Whoopi will be back for season two, two of the Picard. which would also be great if she and Q got to meet again, because first time uh, they met was. Uh, it was kind of epic. I mean, she, she has no she up. has no love for that guy. So because uh, yeah, those screenwriters for everything that Star Trek now, they're doing a heck of a job. So these definitely. shows they're definitely worth watching. Definitely worth digging into. Yeah, keep writing great stories. And you know, for everybody else who doesn't like the new stuff, there's always uh, the Orville, which is Star Trek ripoff pretty much, and they're doing different things. And I would also dare say great things. I love some of the stories that they're telling because some of those stories would never be in Star Trek because they just don't fit in that universe. So if you're looking for something different, something else, you know, you don't like Discovery, you don't like the new stuff, The, the Orville is a show for you. If you haven't started watching, go check it out. You will love it. And I may, I mean, I mean, I know this is a Star Trek podcast. I may be, you know, riffing on it but still you know maybe even it's sacrilegious to mention it but you know there I said it it's the captain's chairs and uh, you know we're the captains so of this uh, particular starship called whatever <laughs> this is the part where he goes on for a while yeah you know, feel free to tune out um, yeah any more yeah. thoughts no no I think you went uh, above and beyond <laughs> above and beyond I think is the word we are looking for here. you mean I've uh, the adventure where no other man has gone before. Yeah, <laughs> let's let's not let's not. That's it from us. Until next time. Dash Bros out or do we? Do you, we used to do something Star Trekky, but I, I can't remember. What we're doing. And I want to watch Enterprise. <laughs> you want to watch whatever you're watching? Uh, I'm done with Deep Space Nine. Uh, I may start. I, I don't know, man. Uh, you got any? We're gonna do it. Go, go, bye. <laughs> Over and out.